This is an inertia switch. It is used to detect sudden movements in a car. Throughout most of its life, and in ideal situations its entire life, it stays in the on position, which is just how it is here. You'll notice there's a red button on here, and it's in the down position. As you're driving along, this is allowing electricity to flow through it. This particular one is used on some Ford models, and it's wired up to the fuel pump. The reason why this is wired up to the fuel pump is, in the event of a collision, your fuel lines may break, and your fuel pump may be still on, pumping fuel out into the open. If that catches on fire, you're in for a real bad time. So when your car gets hit, the switch activates and now this button is in the up position. Not all of them are designed this way. Some of them are self-resetting and some of them are one-time use. This particular one, once you are in an accident and the car is put back together, you have to find this switch, go in and press this button and it stays down, that's ready to go again. It seems like a simple enough concept, so let's open this up and see what's inside. First, I'll take this connector off. This is a pretty standard connector. It's secured just one way. A lot of times, safety components will have more complicated connectors than this. I got this to come apart cleaner than I was expecting. We've got a few components here, and it's important to note where the circuit goes in both positions. So right now, this button is in the down position where it normally rests. The current path that electricity is taking, pun intended, is from this contact to this contact. You can follow the metal through this switch here to the inner piece of metal down to the center contact. If an impact is strong enough to dislodge this ball from this magnet, the ball is going to fly up and hit the switch. When this red button comes up, these contacts come together. This disconnects that first circuit in two places, both here and here. And this was putting tension on this metal strip here. And now that the tension is off, the metal strip bends back into place and completes a circuit from this contact to this contact. Starting on the outside, it goes up this contact along this metal strip. This is where they make contact. And this goes down and back out. All right, let's dislodge this ball. All right, you see the ball flung up, hit this, knocked it out of place. It changed the circuit from this contact to this contact. This one remains the same. Now the collision is over, the car has been repaired, and now we're resetting this switch. Puts the ball back in place if it isn't there already. Due to the design of the case that it's in, this metal ball doesn't have really anywhere to go but back down on this magnet. There's kind of a cone shape to the case, and if the ball happens to be resting up against this metal here, the act of pressing the button down is going to fling it back into that magnet. So this normally closed circuit goes to the fuel pump because the fuel pump needs to always be able to run until there's an accident, in which case there needs to be electrical contact to send to either a safety component or the computer so that it knows that there's been an accident, the fuel pump is off, something needs to happen. So that's how an inertia switch works. If you enjoy seeing the insides of auto parts and seeing how they work, I've put together a playlist of all the videos where I've taken auto parts apart to show what the insides look like. Thanks for watching, consider subscribing, and I'll see you in the next Cars Simplified video.